Well, welcome to the program, everyone. We begin the day with an exit plan that just may overreach, overpromise, and is without a doubt overdue. Today, British Prime Minister Theresa May ended half a year of saying Brexit means Brexit by finally telling us what Brexit is supposed to be. A total termination of membership in the European Union and an end to automatic access to its single market. A hard Brexit. Now, this will all be followed by a new trade agreement between the EU and what May calls the new global Britain. Well, what could be so hard about that? Well, the Prime Minister, she knows. Her speech was laced with little hints of the UK's plan B if Europe plays hardball in negotiations. And for those who say the Brexit referendum should be rethought, redone, or even forgotten, Ms. May is referring them to Westminster. Once this grand plan for Global Britain is ready to be rolled out, the British Parliament will be asked to vote on it. Will it work? Tonight, the hard truth about a hard Brexit. Take a listen to part of the Prime Minister's speech from earlier today. So as a priority, we will pursue a bold and ambitious free trade agreement with the European Union. This agreement should allow for the freest possible trade in goods and services between Britain and the EU's member states. It should give British companies the maximum freedom to trade with and operate within European markets and let European businesses do the same in Britain. But I want to be clear. What I am proposing cannot mean membership of the single market. European leaders have said many times that membership means accepting the four freedoms of goods, capital, services, and people. And being out of the EU, but a member of the single market, would mean complying with the EU's rules and regulations that implement those freedoms without having a vote on what those rules and regulations are. It would mean accepting a role for the European Court of Justice that would see it still having direct legal authority in our country. It would, to all intents and purposes, mean not leaving the EU at all. Well, we know now that the UK is going to leave the EU. What does that really mean? I'm joined here at the big table by David Charter. He's a journalist here in Berlin with The Times and author of two books on the UK-European Union dilemma. He's to my far right. And here, right next to me, is Jens Zimmermann. He's a member of the German Parliament, the Bundestag, and deputy chairman of the German-British Parliament's groups. Gentlemen, to both of you, thank you for taking the time to be on the day. Uh, take away from today's speech. Theresa May told the world that the UK is leaving the world's largest and most successful economic union in human history because Britain wants to be Great Britain again. Is that right, David? That's what we heard, Brent. That's what we heard today. What she's done is followed through on the logic of the vote uh, in June last year, which was driven, as you may remember, by concerns in Britain about EU immigration and the inability to control more fully the British border. Now, rightly or wrongly, that was a main reason behind the decision to leave and the only way that the government and the country could establish more control over who comes to Britain is by leaving not just the European Union, but leaving its single market. That's because the single market has four fundamental principles, the mm. free movement of goods, services, capital and people, and it's been made very clear ever since the British vote that Britain will not be able to stay in that single market unless it accepts full free movement. Well, that drove Theresa May to this position. She actually had very little choice well, I mean, in the matter. It, do you agree with that? Was she driven to the position that we, that we heard today, Jens? I would agree. I mean, for now seven months, I'm telling, there won't be any cherry picking. And if you want to have access to the free market, you have to accept the movement of labor. So um, what we've heard today is really um, the logical outcome. And um, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm happy to see now a little bit clearer. I mean, we will see, we will have lots of discussions how to implement all that. Um, but I'm, I'm happy that um, we don't have to argue again and again if there is a loophole into the single market. Okay, she, she repeatedly called Europe and the EU Britain's friends today in her speech. I mean, you know, numerous times. But take a listen to this part of the speech. 
because our continent's great strength has always been its diversity. And there are two ways of dealing with different interests. You can respond by trying to hold things together by force, tightening a vice-like grip that ends up crushing into tiny pieces the very things you want to protect. Or you can respect difference, cherish it even, and reform the EU so that it deals better with the wonderful diversity of its member states. Jens Seppelsen, that was quite an indictment right there. Yeah, I think when we had some other parts about the new British economic model... And Wait, was, she, was she telling the truth there? She says, you know, you're crushing the, the, your members and you're not respecting diversity. I think the, the EU is founded on diversity. And I mean, uh, for us in Germany, it, it has always been the case, uh, founded uh, after the Second World War and uh, uh, being a fundamental part to our uh, close relations to France and the Benelux uh, countries. So I wouldn't agree on that. But what I think what we've seen today is that T Theresa May needs to, uh, to uh, put bargaining chips on the table because there is not a lot for the UK on the table and arguing about uh, a new tax model, stuff like that. But yes, where's your, where's your anger, though? I mean, there, there, was, there was always a rebate for the UK ever since day one. Right. I mean, they always got, you know, their cake and they were able to eat some of it, too. And now she's saying that still wasn't good enough. I mean, I mean that's really like spitting in your face before she, you know, closes the door on your face. I think there's a lot of pressure on Theresa May, and um, we know that. And um, I think there are several parts for several audiences in that speech. And um, as you mentioned, uh, calling Europe as close friends and pointing out that she's interested in maintaining that friendship was probably directed to us. Mm -hmm. And the, the other parts might be directed to parts of, uh, of the Tory party. Mm -hmm. David, what about you? You're a British citizen living in Germany. Are, is, is there something to worry about now moving forward? Are we about to see a rift there? Is there something to be worried about being a British citizen in an EU country? Uh, fundamentally, there won't be in the long run. But unfortunately, the status of British people in the EU and EU citizens in Britain has become something of a bargaining chip in the negotiations because neither side has so far been prepared to say categorically and with no reservations, everyone who's here now can stay on the, on the terms that they're here. In other words, they can receive social benefits, they can work, um, they can receive their pensions here. That hasn't been made clear yet. It's unfortunate that's been dragged into the negotiations, but I do think at the end of the day that will be clarified and, and there won't be... Uh, that won't be a factor to worry about if the negotiations go, as I hope they do, ra rather more smoothly. Yeah, just take a listen. She mentioned that briefly today um, about what this means for EU citizens in the UK. Fairness demands that we deal with another issue as soon as possible, too. We want to guarantee the rights of EU citizens who are already living in Britain and the rights of British nationals in other member states as early as we can. I've told other EU leaders that we could give people the certainty they want straight away and reach such a deal now. Many of them favour such an agreement. One or two others do not. One or two others do not. That's a bargaining chip on the table, isn't it? It is, and um, what she's reflecting there is her visit her last visit to Berlin, mm -hmm. she brought this up with Angela Merkel and she wanted Angela Merkel to come out with her after that meeting and say, we've reached agreement that Germans in Britain, Britons in Germany, will have their status settled. They won't need to worry about anything. They can stay as long as they like. It didn't happen because Merkel wanted to stick to the very strict European line, which was no pre-negotiations until Britain has formally declared that it wants to leave the EU and begun the two-year official negotiating process, right. which hasn't started yet, actually. Yeah. So um, that has caused some bad feeling and really set up a, um, a bit of a, sh a showdown and, yeah. and a negative atmosphere to the, for the start of the talks. Is that what we're seeing? High noon, Theresa May, Angela Merkel. I mean, is, you know, is Angela Merkel, is she the, responsible for 
No cherry picking, hard negotiations. No, I think if you if you look to the EU 27, you see a very con consistent uh, negotiation line. And um, what Brexit actually did to EU 27, it it made us stronger, put us stronger together. And um, I mean. Today is really the first time we learned a little bit about the ideas of Theresa May, about the, uh, the negotiational position. So this is uh, the starting point to, to discuss these issues. Yeah. And I mean, March isn't too far away. And take a listen to what we also learned today um, from Theresa May about what, what happens if Europe plays hardball. So to our friends across Europe, let me say this. Our vote to leave the European Union was no rejection of the values we share. The decision to leave the EU represents no desire to become more distant to you, our friends and neighbours. It was no attempt to do harm to the EU itself or to any of its remaining member states. So, she goes, we don't want to hurt the EU, but if you play hardball, we're going to use our tax code to suck business away. Good luck with that. I mean, um, th it, it might be a long-term strategy. I'm not sure. I mean, the United Kingdom is not Ireland. It's a far larger country. Um, and if we really come to that point where one country and another and the, the uh, European Union, we are going to that level, I mean, we can... Um, we can put so many regulation into place mm. that no international corporation is really interested in having operations in the UK because what they need is they, it's not um, a good idea only to have uh, post boxes in London. You need jobs and um, we can regulate the shit out of uh, the United Kingdom if that would be the strategy, so. Okay, those are clear words there. David, what do you think? I mean. Yes, that, that is fighting talk, isn't it, Jens? That, 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 that um, I, I, I fear that what is happening here already, even in the studio, is that the, the stakes and the animosities are slightly being raised too high uh, for the kind of negotiation which Theresa May, I think, wants to have. Remember, she's a Remainer. Remember that she, as Home Secretary, she really did a lot of business with the EU on security and she understands the value well, of a very she's, relationship. OK, but David, let me come on. There's a lot of doublespeak going on here. I mean, we hear, we hear it every day from Donald Trump on that side of the Atlantic, but Theresa May herself, she was not a Brexiteer. She was a soft supporter of staying, and now here she is, Mother Theresa of Brexit Britannia. I mean, obviously, people, aren't people justified in being suspicious? Yes, because she has to appeal not just to an international audience, but the main audience that she's speaking to uh, are, is her own party, mm -hmm. the ones who have put her there um, uh, as, as their leader. Now, they, they range from very, very fundamental um, people who do want harm to the European Union. They do want to see it broken up. Um, but there's a whole range of opinions right through to well, we really want the European Union to be a tremendous success so that it's, um, for example, there are not lots of migrants wanting to come from the EU to, to, to take British jobs because they, there are plenty of jobs in Europe, which there aren't you, Let me ask both of you, because we're, we're running out of time, but is, is what we heard today, is that what the voters were thinking? Is that what they wanted last June in the referendum? Yeah, yes, yes. She has delivered on the fundamental... As I, as I started by saying, the fundamental driver of the Brexit vote was really, I think, about the control over borders, the control over immigration, the same kind of thing, the control over who really runs Britain. But was Britain's it about leaving the single courts. market? Yes. Do you, do you think that's what the voters wanted to? I'm not sure if the voters really wanted that, but she is. She is delivering what the referendum meant, and but at least it's what 51.8 percent yeah, of the voters yeah. want it. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. Come back in March. Um, we're going to need to talk about this again, if not sooner. David Charter and Jens Zimmerman, to both of you, thank you very much.